So today we are talking about bradycardia in the PACU when your patient's heart rate starts to drop. And I'm talking about heart rates in the 30s, 20s, 40s symptomatic. And this is a response to the patient getting a neuromuscular blockade reversal drug like neostigmine. Hi everyone, welcome back to PACU Nursing Minutes. I hope you all had a really nice Memorial Day weekend with friends and family. And hopefully you're starting to begin to get a little normal out there. So this episode, we are going to talk about bradycardia in the PACU because it's a common complication. And I just wanna share with you what we can do to manage it and to keep our patients hemodynamically stable. So bradycardia is a heart rate less than 60. And about 60% of our surgical patients will develop some kind of arrhythmia. So it's very common. Bradycardia and arrhythmias are caused by the anesthesia. And so the anesthesia has an effect on the heart. And those effects um, are um, come about through conduction delays, um, so sevoflurane, isoflurane, they cause SA node delay, um, they cause delay at the AV node, also throughout the bundles of Hiss and the Purkinje fibers. So you can see anything from a first degree AV block to a bundle branch block um, to even a junctional rhythm. And so I just want you to be aware that the anesthetic drugs do have an effect on the heart. And so what you want to do is assess, are they hemodynamically stable or are they becoming unstable? Has it dropped their cardiac output so much that they can't compensate anymore? So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be looking at that heart rate, you're gonna be assessing the rhythm, and um, you know, a first degree block we, I always inform anesthesia that I've identified it and it what, and you know, and I look at the 12 lead from pre-op and let them know that this has been noted. If their blood pressure is fine and I don't see any symptomatology, then we usually just watch it. Um, but if they become bradycardic, uh, usually below 40 into 35 or 30 or sometimes you see 29 28 that usually below 35 there's a standing order to give um, glycopyrrolate and so glycopyrrolate is an anticholinergic drug and what it does is it works on the muscarinic receptors and when someone gets reversal of their neuromuscular blockade from uh, the anesthesia at the end when they are reversing the anesthesia and they want to return muscle function from the paralysis, um, the anesthesiologist will give a drug called neostigmine. Well, neostigmine is a cholinergic drug. And so what that is going to do is it's gonna enhance the amount of acetylcholine at the synaptic junction to return muscular function. It's gonna inhibit acetylcholinesterase and there's gonna be a profound um, a nicotinic, which is the acetylcholine response, and muscarinic response. And so the anesthesiologist always gives either atropine or glycopyrrolate with the neostigmine. Now, this is to counteract the muscarinic effects of the neostigmine, because it's gonna stimulate those receptors. The muscarinic receptors, uh, they decrease the heart rate, they decrease contractility, um, they can cause AV blocks, um, constriction of your pupils, so they'll be pinpoint, um, also can cause bronchial constriction, salivation um, when they give the neostigmine, and tear production, and also increased secretions um, in the nasopharyngeal cavity. So all of those things we really don't want when we're reversing somebody and waking them up um, and reversing their neuromuscular blockade. So anesthesia always gives either atropine um, or glycopyrrolate with the neostigmine. Now sometimes you need a repeat dose because the bradycardia 
um, continues due to the muscarinic effects of the neostigmine. So that's why sometimes you will need to give a dose of glycopyrrolate in the PACU. And it's usually 0 0.2 milligrams IV given to treat that bradycardia. Glycopyrrolate works gently, um, gives a nice increase in heart rate of about 20 to 25 points, and it's sustained. Um, so it's longer acting than atropine, and it's a preferred management for bradycardia um, after reversal in the PACU. And you always want to find out, is this bradycardia um, symptomatic? So you're going to ask your patient, do you feel lightheaded? Are you dizzy? Are you having any chest pain? And what is their blood pressure? Always recycle it for a fresh blood pressure, you know? And if their blood pressure is 88 over 46, obviously they're symptomatic. And they're probably feeling a little lightheaded, a little woozy, not so good. Maybe they're a little nauseated from this whole like mini vagal response from the muscarinic stimulation from the reversal. So you'll wanna go ahead and follow your physician's orders and treat that. And usually it is glycopyrrolate to make sure you assess your patient and finding out if they're symptomatic because you may have a very athletic person who lives with a heart rate of like 40 to 45 so if they're totally asymptomatic and their blood pressure is fine a map above 60 then I usually watch them if their heart rate is above thought above 35 usually we treat the bradycardia when it starts going below 35 um, but always inform anesthesia, let them know what's going on, compare it to the pre-op EKG or 12 lead to find out if this is a change. And remember what anesthesia does to the conduction system of the heart, it delays everything. So usually, um, most of the time, this is something that with time it's all resolved as the um, reversal of the anesthesia wears off and as they wake up um, and they blow off that SIVO and isoflurane and as the neostigmine does its job um, and the robinol does its job, the glycopyrrolate, usually with time, um, this is all self-resolved and, um, and you're just there giving supportive care. Now, if they are totally symptomatic with it, you're gonna give another dose of glycopyrrolate and you know, you'll follow your orders if you're going to give fluid um, or if you need to go ahead and grab some ephedrine or if you to treat hypotension or if you actually need to hang like a phenylephrine drip. So always follow your physician's orders and if you have any questions, always contact your anesthesiologist. Hey everybody out there, I'm really excited to share with you um, what is coming next week. I have an awesome interview with Jessica Garibay and Kathleen Shearer, and they work at the Community Surgery Center North in Indianapolis, Indiana. And they are going to share with PACU Nursing Minutes what they did to address WAG and their PACU and implement a scavenging system. So definitely you don't want to miss that. Stay tuned. As always, Thank you for watching. Please, if you feel like I'm giving you value added, subscribe, share with your colleagues, drop me a comment. I would love to hear from you. Thank you. I'm Nurse Kathy.